That was then, this is now, chapter 11. The next morning, I really thought that I had dreamed the whole thing. I thought I had had a nightmare, one I only vaguely remembered. It seemed a long time before it finally got through to me what had happened. Then I was tired and sick, and I wondered why people didn't die from being so mixed up. Why had I turned on Mark? What had I done to him? I tried to remember how shook I had been about Kathy and Eminem, try to justify what I had done, but I didn't know how, but I didn't know now. If I had asked Mark to quit selling pills, he would have. I didn't have to do what I did. Last night, it had seemed the only right thing to do. Now, Mark was in jail. It would kill him. It would kill him. It would kill him. Brian, are you going to work? It was mom. I was sitting on the edge of the bed, holding my head in my hands. It felt like it was going to burst wide open. Mom, I said wearily, what have I done? You don't hate me, do you? She came in and sat down on Mark's bed. Brian, you are my only child and my son, and I couldn't hate you. I love you. You loved Mark too, I said, only beginning to realize how this mess was going to affect her. Mark, her stray lion behind bars. Yes, I loved Mark and I still do, but you are my son and you come first. What Mark was doing was wrong. Maybe the juvenile authorities can help him. You know they can't. I was too worn out to play games. Let's pretend everything will turn out all right. Let's pretend it's all for the better. We'll just have to make him understand it was wrong and that what you did was for his own good. I took a look, good long look at her. She was my mother and I loved her, but there wasn't any sense in carrying on the conversation. She was tired and hurting too. And she had hoped and I didn't, and we couldn't talk. I gotta get ready to go to work, I said. Brian, don't hate yourself, mom said, but that was easier said than done. I went through the day mechanically, numb, and hardly knowing what I was doing. I had a rep as a wisecracker and a clown, so this got me a lot of ribbing, but I hardly heard it. I was glad to get home and lie on my bed, smoking one cigarette after another, not thinking, scared to think. I heard someone at the door, but since mom answered, I didn't pay any, att any attention. Brian, you have company, mom finally called. It was Kathy. It occurred to me with the shock that I hadn't thought about her all day long. Brian, your mother told me what happened. I'm so sorry. She looked tired and nervous, but I couldn't work up any sympathy for her. Are you? I said. Why? Brian, she said, tears jumping to her eyes. You know, I know how you feel. Oh, I said. No, I hadn't realized that. She was quiet, bewildered. I knew I was hurting her, but I couldn't seem to stop myself. It was as if I was outside myself, watching while someone named Brian Douglas hurt his girlfriend. I couldn't stop him. I wasn't much interested in the first place. How's your brother? I said. Suddenly, it was just some brother of hers in the hospital, not Eminem, not my friend, not somebody I too cared about. He seems better, but I don't know. He's still mixed up. That makes two of us, I thought sarcastically. I thought she swallowed. She was a proud person, and it was hard for her to be humble. I thought maybe you'd come up to the hospital today or call me or something. Then your mother told me what happened. Aren't you glad? I said. You never liked Mark. You thought he was beautiful, but you didn't like him. Aren't you glad he's out of the way? Brian, why are you doing this to me? She said. And suddenly I could hear Mark as plain as day saying, why are you doing this to me, buddy? I'm sorry, I said. I can't talk today, Kathy. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. She said, still puzzled and hurt, but no longer humble. Call me tomorrow. I wasn't going to call her tomorrow, and she knew it. I wondered impersonally why I didn't love her anymore, but it didn't seem to matter. Mark had a hearing or a trial or whatever. I never paid any attention to the formalities. I had to testify. I did. I hadn't seen Mark since they had come to get him. He looked relaxed and amused, tipping back in his chair glancing over everything, glancing over everyone in the courtroom with an easy, almost friendly expression. When I was questioned about my relationship with Mark and answered, we were like brothers, Mark laughed out loud. When he was questioned, he admitted selling drugs and shrugged. I think it was his attitude that made the judge go hard on him. Even though by then judges were beginning to crack down on pushers. Mark was only 16. 
He had always been able to talk his way out of anything, but this time he didn't try. When the judge sentenced him to five years in the state reformatory, he didn't even change expression. I felt like someone had knocked the breath out of me, and I heard mom's little cry of protest. But Mark got to his feet and casually strolled out of the office, out with the officers. He hadn't looked at me once. The next months were a blur. I went to school and went to work and went home and studied. I ended up with straight A's that semester, something that surprised me more than anyone because I couldn't remember a thing I had studied. I didn't date. Once at the drugstore, I ran into Eminem. His hair was much shorter than it had been in years, and he was still thin. I haven't seen you around in a while, he said. Yeah, I've been busy. How you been? Okay, he said but he looked half scared and his old expression of complete trust and intent interest was gone entirely. He looked like a little kid. I had forgotten he was just a little kid, but I don't know. It can come back. They told me I could have a flashback. It could come back. And if I ever have any kids, something about chromosomes, they could be messed up. I don't think I'll ever have any. He was quiet for a minute. I don't remember things too good anymore. All my grades are shot. I couldn't help feeling sorry for him. He had been such a bright, sweet kid. I remember the time, it seemed years ago, when Mark and I had teased him about wanting a large family. Well, that was taken care of. You used to go with Kathy, didn't you? He said. The poor kid, he was really confused. He was reading a monster comic. Yeah, for a while. She liked you better than anybody, he said. I know it. She's dating some guy named Ponyboy Curtis now. She likes him okay, too. I couldn't feel any anger, any jealousy, or anything except a half-hearted hope that they would hit it off together. Any grudge I had ever held against Curtis was gone. So was any feeling I had ever had for Kathy. It seemed impossible that I could once feel so emotional about someone and then suddenly feel nothing. I'll see you around, I said, but I hoped I wouldn't. Eminem made me sad, and I hadn't felt anything for so long. It was slightly scary. I spent that summer working full time and trying to get to see Mark at the reformatory. But every time I went, they told me that Mark was causing trouble at the reformatory, so he couldn't even have visitors. I got promoted from sack boy to clerk. I didn't come to work hungover, and I didn't have the manager. I didn't give the manager any lip. I seemed to have become a mixture of the things I had picked up from Charlie, Mark, Kathy, Eminem, Mom, and even obscure people like Mike and the blonde hippie chick and the shepherds. I had learned something from everyone, and I didn't seem to be the same person I had been last year. But like a mixture, I was mixed up. Angela came into the store once wearing short shorts and a tight blouse. It was funny, but she looked even better with short hair. I guess I'll never see a girl as good looking as she is. She came through my counter, staring at me coolly, daring me to say something. Poor little chick. I didn't hate her any more than I loved Kathy. I felt sorry for her. Have you been, Angel? I said, but not smart-like. I really wanted to know. Well enough. I hear you dumped little what's-her-name on Curtis. Well, they deserve each other. I just shrugged and rang up her stuff. She was going to be bitter all her life, and all that beauty was wasted. You know, I thought for a long time you were really low, Brian, she was saying, but what you did to Mark really proved it. Angel, you look really good with short hair, I said, and I don't know whether or not it scared her, but she shut up. One night when I was lying on the floor reading a book, mom came in and sat down. Brian, you got even with Mark for Kathy. Then you got even with Kathy for Mark. When are you going to stop getting even with yourself? I rolled over and got up and went for a drive. I couldn't talk to mom, especially when she was telling the truth. Finally, at the end of August, I got to see Mark. He couldn't leave the reformatory, so I had to go in. He had been in so much trouble that the authorities considered my visit a last-ditch effort to straighten him out. If it didn't work, they were going to send him to the state prison. They told me they hoped I could influence him. They didn't say how. I thought we'd have to talk through a wire dilly like you see in prison movies, but instead we were left alone in a room which I remember as strangely empty. Hiya, buddy, Mark greeted me. Slumming? I couldn't speak. I had a real bad pain in my throat. Mark had changed. 
He had lost a lot of weight, but somehow it had stretched his skin over his bones and slanted his eyes. He hadn't lost his looks, but exchanged them. He looked dirty somehow and hard, things I had never seen in him before. He sh his strangely sinister innocence, innocence was gone, and in its place was a more sinister knowledge. He seemed to be pacing like an impatient, dangerous, caged lion. How goes it? I managed finally. What's the action like in here? If I told you how it was in here, he said, you'd be sick. There was a silence. Then he continued. I didn't have to see you. I wanted to, though. I had to make sure. Make sure of what? Make sure I hated you. I suddenly remembered that time so long ago when Kathy had looked at Mark and for a moment I had hated him. I wonder what it felt like to experience that feeling all your life to hate the person you loved best. Mark, I began miserably. Mark, I didn't know what I was doing. Can it, buddy? He glanced around. Groovy place, ain't it? Seems like home now. I hear you've been causing trouble. Yeah, I don't seem to be able to get away with things anymore. I thought I would break down and cry then, but I didn't. Listen, I said, you straighten up and they'll let you out early on probation or parole or whatever it is, and you can come home. I'll get you a job at the store. Like how you will, Mark said in the same easy, pleasant voice he had used all along. I ain't never going back there again. When I get out of here, you ain't never going to see me again. We were like brothers, I said, desperate. You were my best friend. He laughed then, and his eyes were the golden, hard, flat eyes of a jungle animal. <laughs> like a friend once said to me, that was then, and this is now. I broke out in a sweat and was suddenly glad of the walls and the guards and the bars. I think if he could have, Mark would have killed me. I haven't tried to see Mark since then. I heard in a roundabout way that he was sent to the state prison. I've just been sort of waiting around for school to start. Not much caring whether it does or not. I don't seem to care about anything anymore. It's like I'm worn out with caring about people. I don't even care about Mark. The guy who was my best friend doesn't exist any longer, and I don't want to think about the person who has taken his place. I go over everything that happened last year, trying to figure out what I could have done different, what I would do different if I had the chance, but I don't know. Mostly I wonder what if. What if I had found out about Mark some other time when I wasn't half out of my mind with worry about Kathy? What if I hadn't met her in the first place? Would I still have grown away from Mark? What if Eminem had had a good trip instead of a bad one? What if someone else had turned Mark in? Would this there still be hope for him? I'm too mixed up to really care. And to think, I used to be sure of things. Me. Once I had all the answers, I wish I was a kid again when I had all the answers.